all right then welcome back everyone let's solve this question longest devices interval on this question uh like uh, on the surface uh looks very difficult uh like how are you gonna do it but the idea is very simple it's the observation uh, that is uh important like uh the observation that you will see here is uh just uh, mind-boggling like when i first saw it i was like whoa what just happened the question is very simple i hope you have read it once uh what we want to find out is we are given a positive integer in and what we want to find out is we want to find out uh, a maximum interval uh, we want to find out a maximum interval. Just a second. Yeah. So we are given a positive integer n, and we want to find out a maximum interval L to R of positive integers such that n is a multiple of every uh, number in that range. So basically, we want to find out a contiguous uh, segment of numbers uh, like this a1, a2, a3, so on, a r minus L plus 1. This is a contiguous. That is, a2 is a1 plus 1, a3 is a2 plus 1, and so on and so forth, right? So we want to find out the maximum of interval so that n is a multiple of every number in the range. Fine. So that's what we want to find out. Uh, of course, like uh, if you want to find out an interval in which n is a multiple of every number, then those numbers have to be smaller than n, right? So one straightforward approach would be to just run a for loop from one to n, uh, run a for loop from one to n, and find out the big, that biggest range, right? So that that won't be much difficult. Like you can just run a for loop uh, from i equals to one to n, and then uh, maybe you can keep track of uh, multiples of n. And so this can be done. This can be done very easily uh, using just one variable. Uh, so you, if you can, you can just check whenever a number is dividing n, is it uh, equal to the last element? Okay, is it equal to the last element, and so on, right? So if it is in, uh, equal, then we're going to increment the count of the segment basically. So it can be solved easily by running a for loop from one to n. Uh, but the problem here is uh, the constraints. N's value goes around 10 power 18, and t is 10 power 4. All right. So all in all, uh, all in all. Uh, you will have 10 power 22, right? All in all, you will have a total like, if you try to do this, the total time complexity will be 10 power 22, and this is definitely not allowed, right? You cannot uh, have, you cannot write a code which runs at, which runs for 10 power 22 iterations. That's not possible. You, at max, you can go for 10 power 7, right? Around 10 power 7 in competitive programming, right? Otherwise, you'll get a TLE. So, frankly, uh, I tried uh, running it for this, just for uh, seeing it, and I did get a TLE, okay? If you try to run a for loop from 1 to 1, the answer might be correct for some test cases, but it, it will quickly give a TLE. Okay, so the simple solution uh, is there. Just check all the numbers from one to n, right? Uh, why checking numbers from one to n makes sense? Because if n has to be a multiple of some number, it has to be smaller than n. That's obvious thing, right? Okay, so we cannot do this. Then what? If we cannot do this, then uh, we'll need to make some observations, right? We need to make some observations. Now, let's just consider a case uh, when n is odd. Let's say, what are odd numbers? Just take some bigger odd numbers because we want to find the range in which n is a multiple of all those numbers, right? So the bigger odd numbers that come to mind are 27, 39, and 63 okay so what uh, like 27 is multiple of what numbers uh three uh nine of course one as well and 27 okay then let's see 39 so what 39 is a multiple of which type of numbers one three 13 39 okay let's uh, see 63 i think you'll be able to see what i'm trying to say so 63 right so one three and then uh is 7, 9, and 21, right? So these are the numbers, like odd numbers I've taken. Uh, and just look at uh, the numbers of which this number is a multiple, right? Basically, we are after a range in which n is a multiple of uh, every number, right? But uh, what are you seeing here? Uh, what are you seeing here in this case of when n is odd? Right? Because in the end, your input is just n, okay? So what you are seeing is, uh, what you are seeing is, uh, if n is a multiple of some number, definitely n will be multiple of that number plus 1. Right, so if n is a, like here 27 is multiple of 3, definitely 27 is not a multiple of 4, right? It directly comes from the fact that this n is odd. So if a number divides, basically if n is a multiple of some number, definitely it won't be a multiple of that number plus 1, right? So basically if 39 is a multiple of 3, 39 won't be a multiple of 4, right? If, uh, yeah, fine. So that's what it is. So the observation that is here is if n is odd, if n is odd, the largest interval such that n is a multiple of all the numbers in that range, the largest interval size, because they've asked for size, right? So largest valid interval, maximum size of valid interval they've asked. Largest interval size uh, would be just one. Right? So that's observation when n is odd. Right? And it's not very difficult to make. So if so if some if n is a multiple of some number, it definitely won't be a multiple of that number plus one. If 63 is a multiple of seven, definitely it won't be a multiple of eight. Right? It directly comes from the fact that this number is odd. Okay, so this observation is there. Now, and it holds for all the odd numbers, right? 1, 3, 5, 7, you can just check it for yourself. And for every odd number, uh, the largest interval size will be 1. Okay, so you have considered the case for odd numbers. Now, let's talk about when n is even. 
I can take some even numbers and try to make observations out of it. Uh, I tried it. Uh, maybe you can try this number n equals to 40. And uh, it's the same for force example, uh, you will see. And then you will find uh, a largest valid interval will be one of the interval will be 4, 5. Right? Another interval is of course 1, 2. Uh, so these are the basically largest valid interval. You cannot get an interval of size more than 2. That's fine. So you cannot get an interval of size more than 2. So this is 2 is the answer by the way here. We can trace out some more examples and look out for yourself. But uh, it will be a little bit still difficult uh, to see what is going on here. So in such questions, when you don't know uh, how to reach the answer, okay, this is a very common pattern in computer programming. If you don't know how to reach the answer, assume the answer exists and then go back. So let's just assume that I know the largest valid interval. Okay, I just uh, know the largest valid interval. So let's say uh, that size is uh, 5. Okay, size of largest valid interval is 5. I, because I usually don't like to deal with variables, so I'll just take some examples. So 5 is a healthy number here, right? So let's say largest valid interval is 5. And the elements uh, we have are a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. So when I say largest valid interval is 5, I actually mean r minus l plus 1 is 5, right? So this is al, this is al plus 1, al plus 2, so on, al plus uh, r, a, sorry, al plus Sorry, this would be what? Uh, Al plus Al plus R minus L. That's what it would be, right? So, mm -hmm. good. So, this is what it is. So, basically, this is the interval we have. Now, what? Uh, so, this is a valid interval. Fine. So, now what observation can you make? Okay. So, you don't know what are the values of it, but what you know is these values are contiguous, right? So, A2 is A1 plus 1, A3 is A2 plus 1, A4 is A3 plus 1, and A5 is A4 plus 1, right? So, this is all thing. So, write down the observations here, here with pen and paper. So these all are contiguous. That is important. Right? So the largest valid interval, there are five elements here and these all are contiguous. Okay. So keep this thing in mind. Fine. Okay. So n is a multiple of a1, n is a multiple of a2, n is a multiple of a3, and n is a multiple of a4, n is a multiple of a5. n can be written as uh, a1 into k, uh, n can be written as a2 into k1, a3 into k2, right? And uh, a4 into k3 and a5 into k4. So basically, since n is a multiple of all of them, n can be written like this. Fine, no problem here. Uh, okay, what next? Okay, so remember this thing. We have contiguous segment and n is a multiple of all the elements in this contiguous segment of five elements. Now, very important guys, the uh, next two minutes are very important. Hear me out. n is a multiple of a1. Fine, no issues. But can you see uh, n is also multiple of 1 here? If you have written here 1 a1 into k, can you also write it like this? 1 into a1 into k? So n is a multiple of 1 as well, right? n is a multiple of 1 as well, right? Okay, let's, uh, so n is a multiple of 1 as well. There is no point here. Uh, there is no doubt here. Okay, now let's see. Uh, n is a multiple of a1. Fine, no problem. Now, uh, is a1, uh, is a1 a multiple of 2? Basically, basically, can I write a1 like something like this? 2 into x, something like this? Okay, it may or may not be. I don't know. Uh, so I'm asking whether a1 is a multiple of 2 or not. So is can a1 be written as 2 into x or not? I don't know. Uh, let's just assume it cannot be. Okay. If a1 is not a multiple of 2, a1 is not a multiple of 2, a2 will definitely be. Why? Because a2 is just a1 plus 1, right? So if you have a number 3, if 3 is not a multiple of 2, 4 is definitely a multiple of 2. If 9 is not a multiple of 2, 10 is definitely a multiple of 2. So I don't know what the segment is, but uh, I know for the fact that if this guy is not a multiple of 2, this guy is definitely a multiple of 2, right? So here, under our assumption, this a2 can be written as 2 into some uh, x, 2 into some x into k1, right? Then so the end, uh, if this uh, this entire thing can be written as 2 into x into k1, something like this. So what did you find out? n is a multiple of 2 as well. Okay, good. So since a1 can be written as a multiple of 1, uh, a1 can be written as a multiple of 1, n can be written as a multiple of 1, fine. Now since this a2 guy can be written as a multiple of 2, n is a multiple of 2, right? n is a multiple of 2. Okay, fine. Now, let's just say, uh, again, let's talk about 3. Let's talk about 3. Is a1 multiple of 3? Uh, let's just say not. Let's say uh, it is not a multiple of 3. If, is a2 multiple of 3? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but if even a2 are not multiple of 3, a3 definitely is multiple of 3. So, what I'm saying is, let's say you have numbers like this, 5, 6, 7, or let's say 4, 5, 6, 7. If this guy is not a multiple of 3, if this guy is not a multiple of 3, so it leaves a remainder 1, this guy will leave a remainder of 2, and this guy will definitely leave a remainder of 0. This guy will definitely leave a remainder of 0. A1 is not a multiple of 3, A2 is not a multiple of 3, A3 definitely is. So basically, what I can do is I can write it like something like this. 
3 into let's say some p into k2 so basically n is a multiple of 3 n is a multiple of a3 right and a3 is a multiple of 3 a3 is a multiple of 3 so eventually n is a multiple of 3 as well right n is a multiple of 3 as well okay you see what i'm uh, going so eventually uh, eventually what i'm saying is there can be n is a multiple of 4 as well n can be multiple of 5 as well n can be multiple of 5 as well how so how did i get this observation i think i'll find it a little bit fast here so what just happened here is if you have a contiguous segment of x elements if you have a contiguous segment of x elements so here you have five elements you will find there you will find there multiples of 1 2 3 4 so on till x so if you have a contiguous segment of five elements in that contiguous segment of five elements you will find multiples of 1 2 3 4 and 5 why is that why is that because when you divide a number by let's say uh, this 3 when you divide a number by this 3 you will get a reminder that is 0 1 or 2 since you have five elements at your disposal, even in the worst case, if the first guy was not a multiple of three, this guy will leave a remainder of, let's say, this guy in the worst case leaves a remainder of one, this, will, this guy will leave a remainder of two, and this guy will leave a remainder of three. Uh, sorry, not three, zero, right? So let's consider the four. Okay. If this guy left a remainder of one, this guy left a remainder of two, this guy left a remainder of three, this guy will definitely leave a remainder of zero. The point I'm trying to make here is in a contiguous segment of x element, you will definitely find multiples of all the numbers from one to x. And this directly comes from the fact when you divide a number by x, all the remainders that you get are 0 till x minus 1. And if you have x elements, if you have x elements, then definitely you'll find a number which is a multiple, which is a multiple of all the elements from 1 to x. So where were we? We first told this is a valid interval. This is a valid interval a1 till a1, a2, a3, so on, a5. So the interval size is not bigger than this. That was our assumption. And then again, this were contiguous elements. This were contiguous elements. And if this were contiguous elements, this were contiguous elements. What you find out is for every number, for every number, for every number in this range L, R minus L plus 1, L till R minus L plus 1, you are finding a multiple, you are finding a multiple of all the numbers, you are finding a multiple of all the numbers in range 1 to R minus L plus 1, right? So, if n is a multiple of all the numbers in this range, n is a multiple of all the numbers in this range as well. Right? Because you are finding all the, <laughs> you are finding basically, uh, n is a multiple of all the numbers in this range, right? So definitely, since all the numbers in this range are multiple of these guys, n is by default, by the transitive rule, multiple of all the numbers in this range. So all this, uh, what it proves is, what it proves is in the end, it suffices to check, it suffices to check the ranges starting from l equals to 1, right? Ranges starting with l equals to 1. So basically, you can start checking from 1, 2, 3, so on, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. And whenever you encounter a first guy, whenever you encounter a first guy, says that n is not a multiple of it, you can stop. And the longest range will be, so basically what I'm saying is, find the, find the smallest, find the smallest x, find the smallest x, okay, starting from 1, basically, start from 1, start from 1, find the smallest x such that n mod x is not equal to 0 that is n is not a multiple of x and your answer will be x minus 1 and your answer will be x minus 1 simple so basically <laughs> let's uh, go through it once again we assume this is the maximum range it had five elements if it, if it had five elements and basically n is a multiple of all of them if n is a multiple of all the elements from all the five elements then definitely n is a multiple of, multiple of all the elements in range 1 to 5 right so basically what it means is if you have a valid range from l to r minus l plus 1 you have a valid range from 1 to r minus l plus 1 as well, right? If you have a range from l to r minus l plus 1, you have a valid range from 1 to r minus l plus 1 as well. So what it says is, it suffices to check all the ranges starting from l equals to 1. So basically, just find the smallest x such that n is not a multiple of x and the answer can be x minus 1. Now, I know the proof can be a little bit, uh, like the, the observation this was a little bit difficult, but if you think about it, it all makes sense. I even scratched my head uh, for a lot of time to make sense out of this. So if you're not getting it please uh, rewatch the video once again you'll get it uh, in case i put every point uh, that was supposed to be mentioned yeah uh, that's that so let's just uh, quickly look at the code uh, and then we'll end this video you've just taken the input i've just taken unsigned long long just for the simplicity because we have 10 power 18. however long long also works because long long can handle it in 10 power 19 right but i just wanted to be safe uh, that's why i took unsigned long long because n was a positive integer right so yeah fine then starting from one starting from one find out find out the first integer basically the smallest x such that n is not multiple of it, n is not multiple of it, and your answer will be simply x minus 1. You can just break it and just print it. Right? So basically, you, uh, what this loop is doing is you are just starting from 1, just starting from 1, 2, 3, so on, and then when smallest x comes, which is not a basically says that n is not a multiple of this number, you are definitely sure all the numbers in the all the numbers in this range, 1, 2, 3, x minus 1, uh, n is a multiple of all those numbers. Fine. And then uh, 
you can print the valid interval fine yeah that's that uh, and one last thing uh, this the time complexity of this in the editorial it is written a uh, log of max n frankly i am not able to see why this is log of max n uh, if you are able to find out why the time complexity here is log of max n uh, please uh, write down in the comments i'll be happy to pin it this loop is working very fast that i know it is definitely better than square root of n and uh, n by just taking examples i got to know but i'm not able to concretize why the time complexity is log of max n so if you are able to make sense out of it uh, please let me know i'll be happy to pin your comment in the video and yeah that's that uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one